Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Wealth Around Us. I know it's a little late coming, but I have an interesting form for you this time. I um, was going through the garage, and I was like, Oh, happy joy! I found a bunch of more knives. Um, I could I'd whip you ten out of this drawer immediately, but um, I found a few more knives in the garage that uh, were, frankly, just throwaway material, but I got looking at them, and the steel is legit on all of them, and I said, oh, well, that, that alone is worth keeping them. I can, you know, fasten tools or something out of them and show you how to do that. Well, what I'm going to do today is show you uh, how I've turned a butcher knife into a bushcraft knife, and I'm about to show you how to use the Ruizen Pro knife sharpening system to put a blade back on it, get it back up to uh, razor sharpness and working order, and we'll have a look at it. So... This is the one we're starting with right here. You can see what I did there, how much I cut off of it. But I beveled quite a bit of that off and got this to about the shape I want. This is a like a late 90s model uh, J.A. Hankel's International Everedge Plus stainless steel knife. Uh, it's higher end stainless steel. Not very much flex to it and uh, good back on it, so I decided, hey, I'm going to make a bushcraft knife. Uh, maybe give it away, maybe have it on the four-wheeler. It's just going to be around, you know. These things, uh, they make great repurposed tools, so that's exactly what we're going to work with here today. Uh, this one is a very interesting story. Um, found that in a drawer, and it turned out to be an old uh, Washington Forge uh, steak knife. And I said, wow, isn't that neat? I mean, full tang, or not full tang, actually. It's about half tang. Uh, old parched wooden handle. I think I'm going to oil that handle up. I'm going to do like I did on this knife. And I'm going to take that piece of shit serrated blade off of there because this serrated. I mean, it was a great idea in the 90s while it lasted because no one knew how to sharpen knives. And they still don't. But, um, like this one, as you can see right here, I could, like, lick that up and down. And, uh, it, would, it wouldn't even break skin on my tongue. It's pathetic. I mean, that it's, it's, I remember eating a, my first steak with one of these knives that we had. This was a set of uh, knives we had that just somehow... This is the last survivor, you know, that, that hung in there with us. So I'm going to make a little eating knife with this. And uh, that's going to be, you know, for bushcraft and stuff like that. Or possibly even, you know, filleting and skinning. Uh, here's another really cool little idea. Uh, I found this when I was uh, redoing my socket set the other day. It was just a mess in there. And I decided to clean it up because we've been getting a lot of stuff geared up and ready to do for you here on The Wealth Around Us. And this is just a little stainless steel Korean nail file but what I'm going to do is uh, since it's got a nice tip on it I mean I could I could hurt myself on that by accident I'm gonna put a blade on this side and it's gonna be like a scalpel as you can see here we've got uh, 120 to 3,000 grit to work with here on this machine and it's gonna be cool it's gonna be you know you can use it as a little holdout weapon put it in your sock put it in bottom of your shoe or even better yet like inside the seam of your blue jeans through a little slit where you can just grab it with a string affixed here like so and pull it out and you know you'd be surprised in a bad situation what a nasty little trick like that can do for you so that's going to be another cool one I'm gonna do with that. Uh, here's another neat one and if you wonder what this smoke right here is that is a uh that is a cool mist humidifier, and that's going to be another video, but it's just going right here because it's the heat's running and, and my face is real dry, but you can see the, the mist that it left on that knife. Make a great air conditioner, by the way. This one is, uh, it's the same thing. It's, it's out of that same set of Hankels. Uh, there was a plastic shopping bag in the garage, and it was to be thrown out, and I got digging through it, and I said, oh, this is a bunch of good steel knives. You know, I'm not going to throw this away, but... This is the paring knife out of that set, and I'm going to make a skinning knife out of that and put a little gut hook in the end of it and everything. It's going to be real cool. Uh, this is another one from that set. This is, I believe, like a boning knife or something like that. Um, get you a better look at it in the light. And uh, I just, I think it's, I mean, it doesn't have much flex in the, in the blade at all, even at the end of it. It's the right shape. All I'm going to do is shave off this incredibly crappy serrated edge right there that is just that's why we quit using it because it became so dull you couldn't cut an effing bagel with it so uh yeah we we shit can these and i'm gonna turn it back into you know a bushcraft or filleting knife or something useful you can use like that for. there's a wealth around us and this is what it's all about this is another cool 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 one uh this is just some i can tell it's american because it doesn't it doesn't have any markings it's old and i remember this set 
um, of flatware when I was a kid. This was one of my, it's either my aunt's or my grandmother's sister. Because I remember these, but they had matching forks too. There's still a couple of matching forks in the drawer like that. We hang on to things for a while. But uh, we're going to turn this into some kind of little cool bushcraft knife because you couldn't ask for better than that. All steel construction. I bet I could put a, a drop point and a, and a tip on that and make this like just a razor blade. And this would make a great little eating knife or skinning knife. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. Let's get us started here. Now this whole assembly, this clamp assembly, can do a lot of things. It can hold big thick knives or it can hold little thin knives. Uh, it can space it out with the spacer upside down. It can hold uh, even machetes and thicker tools like that, like scissors and uh, what have you. But it's a very, very simple method. Simple mechanism, as you can see, it's all pressure. You go put the jams over here so you can hear. Okay, we're in there good. No, we still need a little bit on this side. And this is why this is fully adjustable. You want to get locked down good. You're going to be doing this a lot with this system. And last but not least, we're going to take this, this is just corn oil. I don't use any kind of, uh, I don't like mineral oil, even though it's great stuff. It's just not for me. And uh, we're going to dab a little bit of that and get it on the uh, gear guide. And this just keeps everything running real nice and smooth while we're working it back and forth, because there is a lot of back and forth with this. Um, very kind of funny method in, in thinking in these. So. Let's start out, we're gonna be using this extensively. Uh, this is the 120, and this is just a bowl. They, you know, a lot of people say, oh, go ahead and use the oil. Well, no, I don't like oil. It permeates the stones. Uh, the stones do their job if there is, and if you put, you know, different kinds of oil on it eventually, you're gonna make it either too slick, or it's gonna get a lot of steel mucked up into it, and then oil holds it in like glue. So what I just use is a little bit of soapy water, just like that, just like the Samurai I use, not too much, not too little. We're gonna fix this to the jaws. Uh, the jaws are like so. This one's kind of free floating. You just stick her in here and bam, we're ready to go. We're going to lose the Allen and then we're going to very carefully, very gingerly check our angle of attack and make sure that that is the angle that we're looking for. Now uh, this particular knife has a real good thick edge on it and it kind of goes into a hollow grind right here so I'm going to put um, I believe uh, I'm going to do kind of a shallower bevel a lot less like this and a little bit more like this so that it's going to retain that edge longer and that we can go ahead and add a couple of different degree changes maybe half a degree per side so okay I don't think I'm going to adjust that any but we're gonna mainly work the tip now because this tip has a very broad plane on it from where I just ground it off. And I also ground the serrations off of that machine. And I don't think we're doing this. Hold on just a minute, folks. Let's turn the radio off here before we get a copyright infringement. But uh, all right, I'm gonna start working this edge. So this thing is just as simple as you think it is. You just take it and and you begin hearing the sound. Oh, that's taking the metal off real good. Okay. And as much as I would like to take this thing and like put a piece of wood on it and a strop, I'm not going to do that because uh, that would kind of be, it's really good for like, if you just take it and take four nails with you or four screws, self-tapping screws and put them through there. We could, uh, at the camp, we could bolt it down to the cutting log which would make a great base, or we can hold it just like this. That's one thing I love about this thing is that you can just hold it down like that. But after you start working that blade, you do not want to get this anywhere near this. No, that is bad jujus because you are going to, it, you're not, it's not if, I mean, you need to be careful with some bitch in the world. You're gonna slip in, in blades like this. You do not slip on blades like this. So it's like guns, you know, you, you uh, definitely watch your P's and Q's and mind your gun safety. But uh, if you notice, I'm doing it in short motions at first and then longer motions. That's because once this edge starts coming to this blade, you're going to hear it. It's going to offer less resistance, and all of a sudden, 
you'd just be like, oh, well, is that all it's got? Yeah, that's all, all it's got. And so we're going to want to switch over to the other side. Now, like I said, this is the front part of the blade. And I'm sure we will get to it within a few minutes, but we're going to flip it over a few times with different grits. Minding to take metal off evenly because you want, I mean, you know, once that metal's off there, it doesn't come back. So get a look at her here. Look, see. I need a rag. And that's another thing with this keep a uh, rag dabbed with a little water to do this because you're going to get grit on there. And we are nowhere near it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get more aggressive and uh, work it back and forth. I'm trying to do this so my, my hand is, my big old hand is not in the way, as pretty as they are. And we're not, like I said, we're not applying too much pressure. Oh, see, exactly because of that. Okay, I can feel the edges on that. We need that down there a little bit more, a little bit more pressure on it. I always try not to over tighten this nut. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And I can see right off this is changing, this is eating into that hollow bevel. So uh, this is going to give it a new profile. So we'll just run with that. I'm going to hold it by the edge so we can see what we're doing. And like I said, this front is going to be the longest part of the video. We're, we're going to really take a lot of metal off here because, like I said, this was just ground off and it's very thick at the tip. We're gonna mine how, but you can hear that it's just sounding less raspy, and eventually it won't sound like anything at all. But we're putting a completely new bevel on this. Uh, I want to say I would, you know, whip out the track, the protractor, and measure it and all that, but I'm pretty sure we're at a pretty acute angle. I mean, any knife blade is an acute angle, but this is a pretty steep one. And as you can hear, it's it's meeting me. It's meeting me in the middle. And you do every once in a while want to stop because this thing is spring loaded right here. And uh, once your your stone hikes off of that claw, it will it will shoot across the room and scare the living piss out of you. I know it did me a couple times like that. One time I couldn't find it for like two hours. Like where in the hell did it go? It just disappeared. I think I'm going to start hitting this edge too and get it ground in for you. So you can see what that looks like. Like I said, we're taking it easy. You're not, you know, this is actually a, like a grinder grit. And this is meant for, for coarse grinding. And it really, it can really grind. It's like Madonna people, it can really grind. And you hear how immediately that raspy sound comes right off of it and it sounds like a machine or something. Like... I've already put it all the way on there. Well, that's getting a beautiful Scandi look to it on that tip. It's just silvery polish. Get you a close look at that. This is a process where, um, you know, it's probably going to prove a little thicker than I had anticipated, and that's cool. We will adjust angle of attack, and we will put a third bevel angle on that that makes the blade finally meet up where I want it to in the way I want it to. Well, it feels nice already. Uh, we've got a little bit. Let me show you. There's going to be steel on that stone. What you do for that, you just get you some soapy water, take it over here, some warm soapy water. I kind of, you know, might dab it with a little bit of soap. I think I got 
got a 15 minute limit or a 30 minute limit on these videos, I'm not even certain. But you just put it under a tap, gets you a nice, uh, you know, fine bristled uh, washing brush. Just like seen here. And just after a second, and this is just stone maintenance, you know, you don't want to let that steel pile up in there. We're good. Shot off. Brand new. So we're gonna put her back in the jaws. In these dogs here. And the dogs are a cool thing. It's just that quick. You know, it's an after it's almost after you get learning how to use this thing, it's an afterthought to actually get sharpening with it. This handle makes it real good. A lot, you know, it says to use it like that. I think you have more control like this. So I just do it like this. But yeah, we will hear the raspiness begin to come off that blade as we slowly and evenly work it up. Okay, and I'm paying attention to that frosty bevel. I want to see it. I should have probably worn my headlamp. I just thought it would screw with the video quality. But uh, I want to be able to see it as it is happening. I can tell, yes, it is happening because it's way smoother to the touch. We're going to want to make sure that line is shining at us like you can see it in the light because of these track overhead lighting I had installed. But uh, one of them shining right on it, that's great. But uh, I'm wanting to follow that edge and make sure that it looks the same all the way down it, a lot like you see in those samurai swords. And I'm not talking a real one, I'm talking a fake one where you pick one up in like the shop that, that sells the Inuyasha cosplay shit and the pocket knives and the, and the hookahs and the bamboo plants, you know the kind I'm talking about, those kind. Well. If you look at those swords and mass manufactured items like that, blades in particular, you will see it where a machine puts it on there incredibly evenly, and that's what a machine is great at doing. Hand sharpen stuff, you'll see all kinds of, you know, the blade shape will be like that, the blade shape will be like this, you know, the blade shape will be, you'll, you'll see the difference between if someone took it on a wheel and went, mm, and put their blade on, whether like a machine went, mm, mm. it's a much more, the machines, in my honest opinion, are the, are the better of the two. Oh, and we just had a malfunction there. See, people? The more I spun that out, oh, that was funny. Okay. Okay, no panic, people. Okay, the spring goes here. This goes on there, and the washer and the lock nut go over that, or the wing nut go over that. See, we just had it. You just saw it on camera, people. That's, it'll scare the shit out of you, man. The last time it scared the living hell out of me because, you know, I'm all wary of this thing being razor sharp to start with. And all of a sudden, you know, out of nowhere, doing, you know, you're like, oh, God, oh, God. Because if you drop one of these things on your feet now, like any of my kitchen knives, I'm scared as hell of them. If I, I dropped the butcher knife the other night and I jumped back like a foot, just trying to get away, make sure it didn't, like, pin my foot to the floor. Because they are sharp, man. They are not playing games. And I might even get another video out, like the phone out, and do a uh, paper cut test. <laughs> Although I know people love them, some paper cut tests. And I'll tell you what, paper is really, a, it's a good indicator of how sharp a knife is because a knife that is under that level um, will not definitely uh, cut paper. I've, know, I've seen brand new knives spanking out of the box that won't cut paper. But uh, paper is one of the hardest things on a blade. Uh, that's why paper factories have made special blades and grinding machines that were designed like rat teeth to where they constantly wear themselves sharp because they're made out of a material that degrades very quickly and one that doesn't. It has to, you, know, and you need a special design like that. And even those wheels don't last them very long at all. That's why paper pulperies and all that, they go through a lot of them. They keep lots on hand and an engineer to change them, you know, fix them if they break. and. But I'm wanting that blade to go on there just as evenly as possible. I'm going to go ahead and pull her out of the jaws and have a look at her because we're about to switch angles. Or not angles, but we're about to switch sides. And this is a little dance that you will do with this thing. And it's, that's just how it is. So just get used to it. Let me have a look at it in the light here. Um, yeah, we've got a long way to go on that tip. 
fortunately, I think I have a remedy for that. We're going to increase the uh, 